Hello everyone, welcome to Saturday Night One Shots here at Gehenna Gaming. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. I know... But Wes, how is it Saturday night? I can see the light outside your window. Through the power of magic and make-believe <laughs> and imagination, we are bringing Saturday night to you during the day, or Saturday day during the night, the night. vice versa. <laughs> welcome to the past. <laughs> welcome to the past. This is definitely... Not pre-recorded. It is pre-recorded, um, but we hope that so you you're... can ask us questions in the chat, but we're not going to answer <laughs> you. Some of us might be here. Some of us might not. Who knows? It's a mystery. Um, but uh, this uh, this evening we have uh, the esteemed honor and privilege to be able to play. Uh, I'm gonna brutalize Vason. Vason. There we go. Vason. It's literally the word vase. But rhymes with Jason. Yeah, like, see, I've, I've seen. Not, not really, not really. Um, <laughs> well, no, but we can say it that way because we're dumb Americans. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Very yeah. stupid. We only learn one language over here. It we... is actually Vasen. 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 Yes. Okay, see, <laughs> if at any point I brutalize any pronunciations, yell at me online. I love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, please don't. I, uh, but Va Vasen RPG by Free League. Uh, publishing, a uh, very, very, uh, an award-winning publishing company that have uh, brought such wonderful games like Tales from the Loop, Alien RPG, uh, Mutant Year Zero, and many, many more. And um, leading the charge on this, uh, uh, running our dear, dear investigators through whatever magical horrors that we have awaiting us in the mystical north, or the mythic north, uh, we have uh, Tom Muir uh, here. Uh, the, you you might not see him, but he's here. The voice of God. Uh, t Tom, can you say something? Yes, indeed. I wish you a wonderful evening, zone and daytime, wherever you are right now. Yeah, I'm I'm extremely excited to run this game for you and um, to be in such an esteemed company right now. Um, since you already mentioned it, that languages will be butchered tonight, uh, I will do my best <laughs> to top all of you in murdering English and Swedish as well. So be prepared for <laughs> slaughter. Equal opportunity language butchering is what we're about here <laughs> in Kenna Gaming. Um, founding principles. Before we dive in to a little bit info about the game with Tom here, uh, let's kind of go around and uh, introduce ourselves, uh, who we are, and uh, who might we who we might be playing this evening. Um, and we can start with Kay. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Kay. You may recognize me, or more so, the mask from GG's Monday Night Monster Hearts, where I play Corey the Infernal. Or, well, we'll see. Season two's coming up. Who knows what's mm -hmm. happened? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you can find me mostly on Gehenna Gaming's Discord, which I'm sure one of our lovely mods, thank you, will be dropping a link in chat. Uh, happy to talk with everyone there. And tonight I'll be playing uh, Oscar Doc. He is a, uh, a young 16-year-old vagabond who has a, a peculiar interest in the, the mystics after an encounter with an ethereal, beautiful woman. All right, and next we have Dixie. Hi, I'm Dixie Cochran. Uh, you may know me from some of the Gehenna Gaming streams. I also work for Onyx Path Publishing, so I'm on their channel a lot, and also on the Onyx Pathcast. Um, I am super excited to be here because I've never played this before and it's gonna be super fun. And I am playing an occultist whose name I probably can't say properly, uh, but I've I've been saying it Ulrika Backlund, Backlund. I don't know. I'm so sorry, Jenny. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I feel bad having an actual Swedish person here <laughs> while I'm trying to say these characters' names. That's the um, name now. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 Ulrika Ulrika Ul Ulrika. See, I was trying not to say it that way because I thought that was wrong. See, look at me. Look at me. Okay, anyway, Ulrika. Um, and she has a bit of a mysterious past where she has not gone to school and was uh, raised by a strange grandmother figure and may have some strange powers. Excellent. And the aforementioned Jimmy. Yes. 
Hi, I'm Jenny Bremberg, and uh, Tom might have heard me do some guest starring in uh, Red Moon Role Playing, where I've played Coriolis, Expanse, uh, well, a lot <laughs> by now. <laughs> I've been doing it for uh, like two years or so. so. We love uh, Red Moon Role Playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they are they are the best. So yeah. Um, and I will tonight be taking on the role as Yalmar, the the old priest in the company, with of course distinguished and uh, might be a bit doubtful whether or not his god still exists. But yeah, he's still a priest, though. <laughs> We've got trolls and all sorts of things. God, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I am. Wes Franks, or Brother Wes, from Carrying Comfort Studios. You've probably seen me here often. If I'm not in the chat, then I'm on here, or I'm doing something on the internet, something or another. Uh, and this evening, I'll be playing uh, Christian Omklint, who is a uh, 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 soft of voice, strong of build, uh, former military man, that is a uh, former disgraced military man, who is trying his best to redeem his honor in not only his own eyes, but more importantly, his father's eyes. As we all know, that's the important thing. It's not what you think of yourself, it's what your father thinks of you. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think my character has parents, so. <laughs> Way to rub yeah. that in. Yeah, I don't, think my, I don't think mine does either. Haha, ha, I have a dad. He doesn't love me, but I have one. <laughs> <laughs> that's always a healthy relationship i guess <laughs> hashtag is it a ganish gaming stream if there is no daddy issues no. <laughs> no. all right so uh tom right. you want to take it away for us yes i'm gonna take it away so um just for my players we are going to change um locations in the foundry you should see uh, stuff happen, magical stuff in the landscape. Should... It's happening on screen. <laughs> oh my scene. god. <gasps> I have no. no idea what you're seeing. Beautiful mountains. Oh, yeah. let me go ahead and zoom out so we can actually see them. Yeah, I can't, I can't see this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, oh. oh, God, I just made it very tiny. Now I still can't see it. There we go. This is only a very tiny part of the mythic north, the place and the time we are going to visit tonight. You can imagine the era as Victorian Sweden, just with fairies and trolls. And um, yeah, minor alterations to make it a more uh, nice place to visit, like maybe you find people in uncommon gender roles so for that time at least um in this parts the game and i do take some um uh, liberties to to make it just uh, a nicer a nicer place it is horrible enough since <laughs> bad things happen to people all the time and sometimes it isn't humans who are doing these horrible deeds. I mentioned the trolls, but there are other more nefarious and evil or not understood creatures out there. And the normal person isn't equipped to deal with them because they're hidden away from the mortal's eyes. There is only a small group of people who um, had some encounters with the supernatural who are now able to look behind the veil and see them, see the creatures, see the vessel. Some of these founded a secret society, which is surprisingly often contacted by mail to help them with some supernatural problems. And is these are our uh, investigators. They venture out to 
solve the problem by looking behind the stage, deducting what creature might lurk out there and how to get rid of it because slaying is not an, op uh, is not an option. You can't kill a vessel until you know how to kill it. But most often that isn't the solution. The investigators have to find a ritual, something that will appease or banish or yeah, maybe kill the creature in the end. We will see if our investigators are successful this night. Are there any open questions? Okay, very fun. <laughs> then let's get started. The sun is close to kiss the highest mountain tops as you finally cross the fine crest. You have been taking a taxing hike for, do, uh, for two days by now. And you were worried to have to sleep on a cold, rocky slope once again. But luckily, a valley nestles up to the rough, rough mountain range right in front of you. In the middle, there's a lake. Crystal clear water reflects the late afternoon sunbeams and is bordered by pine tree forests and myriads of flowers. Some fisher boats return from the large lake to a small village not too far away from you. How do you feel in this moment after weeks of travel and days of climbing mountain ranges? I would say Christian is probably silently gathering his bedroll and everything. Um, grabs a bit of chewing tobacco, puts it in the corner of his mouth, and is just quietly humming to himself, enjoying the, the little bit of breeze and everything, as he's just kind of kicking out the embers of the fire, pressing out his, his military uniform that doesn't have any rank or anything on it anymore. It's just the uniform with, like, the, the, the epaulets. Uh, I think... Oscar sees you uh, do this, and, and he'll, he'll sidle over. He's already taken care of his meager belongings. And uh, gently, his elbow will just sort of poke you in the side, and, and a hand will, will gesture a little out as he sees you uh, pack away some tobacco. He'll turn, look at you, spit on the ground. Can I help you? <laughs> Well, you know, we're friends, we're traveling together, and, you know, you've got, you know, if you've got, then I've got, and then when I've got, you've got. I was not aware of this exchange. Well, you know, buddy, you know, I, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Are you meaning to ask for tobacco? Yes. And I think he sort of furtively looks a little back to make sure that the uh, neither Orika or, or uh, Hjalmar is really looking <laughs> as this exchange is going on. He'd rather not be seen, was sort of hoping to do this a bit quickly. Scratches under his chin, sighs, and goes, pulls out a small pinch and puts it in the outstretched palm and then rolls the, the, the package back up, sticks it in his jacket and goes, honorable man christian and he like pops it real quick does his best to spread it in a manner to which it is very not noticeable do something about your itchy back and he goes back to <laughs> packing up Just laughs and steps away 
I would say that Ulrika is apprehensive. Uh, she's kind of looking around. She's a little nervous. Uh, she doesn't really, you all know from traveling with her that she doesn't really do well with large crowds of people, especially new people. So she has to kind of steal herself to uh, go into a new town. Um, and she's also always looking around for signs or portents or anything that she could interpret as an omen. I think uh, Yalmar walks over to you, Ulrika, and, and places a hand on your shoulder. Will you be okay, Ulrika? Do you prefer to stay outside of the town while we uh, venture into it? It... That's that's my preference, but I'll 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 do what I need to do, which is we have a job to do and we have to stick together and I my granny always said that there's strength in numbers and so we just have to go with that. I, I will think you steal actually, myself. Yeah, you I think you can be hmm, you can take uh, comfort in the fact that there will probably just be a couple of houses not much people around. Yes, I'm definitely better in towns in the city. Not making eye contact with Ulrika. Christian's going through, like, checking the chambers of his pistol and goes, does not the mouse still venture out into the open field, even though there's fear of the owl? And then closes it and then puts it in the holster. Ulrika's no mouse. <laughs> Oscar like sort of sidles over, and he uh, he'll he'll reach out uh, and he'll like lace his own fingers sort of against uh, Ulrika's hand, uh, and don't don't worry, uh, they're gonna they're gonna mess with me before they could even think to get with you, and nobody messes with me. I think it's about time we get going. Does everyone have what they need? Yes, father. Yes, father. <laughs> you also do have a letter, an invitation, which reached you like a month ago. You responded as fast as you could, but travel does take time. To prepare yourself, you take it out and read it once again. If everything works, you should be seeing this letter right now. Ooh. Maybe Magic. some, maybe somebody could read it. Anybody want to take the honors? Yeah, sure. Uh, April seventh, eighteen eighty-seven. Dear gentle persons, I am writing to you out of desperation and in a scarce moment of silence. Something changed our village. The people behave strangely, and during the nights, more and more forsaken souls leave their beds and vanish into the darkness. In the futile attempt to make sense out of this madness, I am willing to believe that there is something in the lake, something calling us. Since last night, I can hear it too. It draws on my soul. Please come. Sorry, I can't see what that says. Uh, please. It's the, the name of the town that's on the map. Please and come. Oh, 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 okay. Um, sorry. Uh, please come to Enslight. Help us. Don't let me become the fifth to disappear. With probably my last regards, Sven Magnusson. Ah, okay. Sorry. It's okay. S sirens in the lake. <laughs> Easy hey, peasy. Hey, hey Hjalmar, what's that little little bit right there that's um scratched out? On the letter? Yeah. Which part? Uh right there on the on the bottom. There's just like a like there's a secondary note. I'm sorry, I, I clicked it away. Be I'm not much for reading, but be beware? The... It might be a warning, yes, uh, but we this should probably not be any more dangerous than things we have faced in the past, so no need to worry, Oscar. 
oh, I'm I'm not worried. I've got you here, Father, to to lead me through the holy light. I will do my best to help you on your path. You know this. It is a bright path indeed. Easy peasy. And you take the path down into the uh, into the valley. You uh, take your way through a small patch of pine forest. And then the first small houses appear. It's uh, not too big place, not too many people here. There's an old church, some sort of inn, um, and harbor area, if you want to call it that, where the fisher boats are resting now. It took you some time to come down here. And a little bit down off the shore, there's a lumber mill. It seems like a like a peaceful place. And we are going for the first roll. Please, everybody, roll for vigilance. Ooh. If you want to roll with the sheet, just click on vigilance. Otherwise, take your logic number plus your vigilance number and roll that in dice. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. I think uh, Oscar is, is, is so busy. He's a little focused on uh, Ulrika and how she's doing. I think he's got his hand still in hers and squeezes as they reach the, the bordering line. But he's not really paying attention much to uh, the village itself as they come in. Yeah, I would say that Ulrika is vigilant about other things. Like she's looking at feathers on the ground and patterns on the trees and kind of eyes darting here and there, but probably missing the obvious. And just as Oscar is keen on making sure that Ulrika is okay, I think even Yalmar is keeping an eye on her to see how she reacts. And that is why he misses anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and even though Christian seems bored and tired, his eyes always searching like a hawk. Yeah, he's I feel like I'm just the like bomb of this group. Like y'all are all just gonna wait for me to explode. Oh, you're not a bomb. You're you're a dear friend. You think this pistol or was an for ethereal the woman? <laughs> no, it was for Ulrika. <laughs> Remember that time that I accidentally raised the dead, and you saw that happen, Oscar? Yeah, that oh, was yeah. cool. Oh, that was dope. I'm here. That's cool. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Um, I think the three of you noticed that um, the wind here is especially gentle. Very, very kind to your hair and your skin. And you feel that there's some sort of trance resting on the settlement. Everything aligns to each other. It's almost so, like a lady's caress. Yes. So it's only only Christian who sees the horse with the cart coming from the left. And one would expect the man who is steering it to to react to you. But he isn't. The cart is directly moving into your group. What do you do, Christian? I'm going to hold up my arms in front of... I imagine, like, compared to everybody else, Christian's, like, 6'4", just, like, big lad, and just, like, has a long wingspan. I just hold up my arms so that nobody steps in front of the path of the cart, and I move them all back, and I go and I have my hand on my saber hilt... And I hold up a hand to the man at the cart. And I just go, man on cart, halt. <laughs> cart man. Cart, cart man. man. Oh, cart Heart, man. Halt. Mm -hmm. 
First casualty. <laughs> I was. It was fun. It was fun with you. I understood you you took your party away from the cart, right? Yes, yeah, made sure nobody else was in the way just in case I do get trampled by the man of the cart. <laughs> yes, then you will get trampled by the cart. Uh if I think he If, if I Sorry. notice, well if I feel that that he's Christian moving us away, I think I'd grab the back of his outfit and tug him with us. Yeah, maybe go for a force check. Oh. Trying. Excuse me, esteemed leader. Can't just go running off like that. I'm doing the I'm doing the coming to America thing where I'm just like holding out my hand. I'm like, halt, taxi. Yeah, and then Oscar's just like, they don't stop, especially if they're busy. I like how Oscar is Southern Victorian Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wasn't gonna draw attention this is, to this it. This is my favorite choice. No, this is great. Yeah. The accent just flew through me the first time I played the character, and it just it, it comes in after a little bit. <laughs> it well, just it's, happens. It's, you almost sound like we do in southern parts of Sweden, so then yeah, that, that's spot on. <laughs> Kay's just doing the Liam O'Brien thing, where it's like if I'm using an accent, that means I'm speaking Swedish. Exactly. Or, or, <laughs> Inspired by my favorite Sierra cast member. Very well. Do you put a uh, blah. You pull him back, and that's actually what's what's saving Kristen. Um, the driver is taking absolutely no notice of you, and he just carries on, and the horse does so too, and they leave you behind. See, you scratch mine, I scratch yours. Chris Are you okay, Christian? Christian just turns to the group and he's got like his eyes are wide for the first time he doesn't have that heavy lidded, like half asleep look. It's just like a rage on his face. And he just flicks off the cart man and just goes he goes, Here's to you Unawares um, who drives a cart and doesn't pay attention to an officer in the road. Well, not to be unkind, Christian, but uh, you got the outfit, but none of the accoutrement. Maybe he just thought you stole it off a corpse. We should carry on to the village. Ulrika this whole time has been looking after the horse and the cart, not paying attention to what you're all doing. And she just kind of turns to you and goes, he seems scared. What makes you say that, Ulrika? Distracted, running, you can see the whites of his eyes. That was a scared horse. Mm, but the the driver wasn't scared, was he? Oh, I don't know. I didn't look at him. Yeah, I kind of got the feeling he was somewhere else in his mind. If we ever cross paths with him, he shall look scared. Really scared. Well, hold your uh, your horses since he didn't. And let's just get into town before we start decreeing violence on others. We should try to find this Sven Magnusson as soon as we can. Maybe I hope that can... wasn't him. <laughs> yes, I hope so too. I doubt it. He said he was in the town, so why would he be coming by horse? But Because he was scared. Well, hopefully the townspeople will be more receptive to a man of the cloth than a man in a uniform after you, father. Thank Yalma, you. Yalma nods and starts walking towards the village again. And you learn that some of the inhabitants of Inslicht are more receptive of you. They're staring, looking from the windows they're looking from the benches in front of the doors where they're doing early evening work and some of them they're eyeing you with um with some strange intentions you feel 
others are, aren't taking notice of you in any way. I mean, if anyone looks at Oscar, he's just gonna, uh, you know, smile and wave. Big, big grin. Happy to see people. <laughs> One of them waves back at you. An elderly man. He uh, smiles. Uh, I zero in immediately. What What building do they seem to be by? Actually, everything is pretty close to each other. This is a two-story living house, and he he doesn't have a porch, so he sits behind his window and looks outside. There's there's some half-prepared food in front of him. He's probably preparing dinner, and there's. A tavern close by the church. Here, yeah. small place. Yanma, got... yeah, sorry. Mm, no, uh, we've got one friendly face. Should I see if I can find out any more? Do you want to proceed to where we think this uh, Mr. Magnuson is? Yalma has always, or Yalma has already started towards the tavern. Well. Um, I think uh, a tavern is probably the best way to best place to look. Um, there's usually a lot of people there, and uh, well, a mug of ale or something will probably loosen their tongues a bit. And this Mr. Magnuson is probably here. Grit should adjust his mustache a little bit, and he goes, Beer and bread always seem a little bit more comforting than talking to an old man and just nods and turns and follows Yelmar. <laughs> where do you go? Where do you want to go? She's just going to follow the group. She uh, she kind of like pulls her hood up and, you know, looks around a little furtively and just brings up the rear and is just kind of glaring daggers at anybody who's looking at her weird. Yeah. You okay if I, if I step away for a moment? Uh, sure. Yes, I'm going to go sit inside. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. And I think he squeezes her hand a little reassuringly before he tapes off. I'll be I'll be in there in a in a second. Okay, thank Kinda, you. Yeah, good feeling. And and he's going to mosey over to the the individual who seemed receptive. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Oscar then. He is chopping some carrots right now. The elderly man mm -hmm. at his window place and he uh, gives you a, a very welcoming and friendly smile as you approach. Hey there. Uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Making sup? Yeah, just just a little something, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you're new to this place, right? Yeah, we're just uh we're just traveling a little group and uh checking out the, the town here. Seems mighty nice, got a good breeze. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, I bet you you from I'm assuming you from around here you grew up here? Yes. Yes. Grew old here too. Yeah. That's a that's a mighty feat growing old. Stay in one place yeah. doing things. Yeah. Uh... He doesn't look satisfied with that. Yeah, but that tells me that you know things. You've seen things. Sure. Yeah. Well, he, he'll lean in a little, just still smiling eyes wide. I like to hear things. You know, we don't really settle much. We go here, there. What's this place like? What do you, what do your wise eyes know? It's remembering, remembering days gone by and missed opportunities. Well, hey, maybe 
I can learn from that. I'm big on learning. Not great on the book learning, but people learns. Good. So what do you want to learn? What's going on here? What's unique about this place? You know, all places are different. They all got something special. We have our lake. Mm-hmm. Feeds us. Mm-hmm. Gives us a home. It's some people say it's talking to us. Well, have you ever heard it talk? Not in the literal way. It's more like you go to a place and you feel connected, like dip your feet into the water and there's something in the ground that that makes you feel belonging there and there's some some understanding from the water it's it's a long time back that I went to the lake to have this feeling, but in the recent days this feeling is back without me being there. I see. I see, so someone calls out belonging to you. That seems silly. People don't belong in lakes. But. No, but we we belong to each other, you know. It's there's so much our life is dictated by the lake. You know, we we get the fish from there, we we travel across of it. We you know, long time ago we we had the best parties on there. Like mm-hmm at the shore and we danced danced in the waters oh, if only these oh, you're in such a rush <laughs> guess that's the, the misplaced enthusiasm of youth but no uh, go on I, I want to hear what you have to say I'm sorry no don't be sorry that's that's the thing we are missing. What I really love to feel once again this um, these urges, these um, rushes, you know, it's all gone by. Live it as long as you can. That's always the goal. Live life like you're dying, they say. All right, so tell you what. How about this? How about uh, you and I make each other a promise? You stay away from the water for now. And once I get uh, near towards when I'm leaving, you and me, we're, we're going to dance on the dock. Hmm. Yeah, that, that would be fine, yes. And roll empathy. I think it's empathy, right? We do this. Uh, I don't have... Uh, yeah, uh, observation. Which, which... Observation for empathy. Okay, I'm sorry. You sure it's not manipulation? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's something you you might notice, not something you Ooh. can get out of him. Uh, no. Um, you know what? Let's push it. Yeah. If you push it, you um, run the risk of gaining a mental condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Um... I'm, hmm. Or you will get a mental condition. Yeah. You have this feeling there's there's something, something that in him that wants to communicate with you, to, to send you some important information, but you can't reach that. How does this make you feel? I think uh, Oscar is a little angry. 
I think this is what he's good at. This is what he provides. He he's no, you know, six foot four Christian. But he can talk to people and liquor or not, they tend to loosen their lips and he tends to see things. And for some reason he's getting a bit a uh, bit of a blind spot right now and he's not that appreciative of that. And a little scowl sort of forms on his lips and his hands tighten. Yeah. And you take the angry condition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you get this feeling. He's holding something back. He's, yeah, or he's feeling something, some nonverbal communication didn't work out the way either of you wanted it to do, but the moment passes by and you didn't manage to make the connection. I think still uh, Oscar will hold out his hand and be like, Let's uh let's shake on it to dance on the dock. Yes. Yes. I'm Oscar, by the way. Dan. Pleasure, Dan. I gotta go meet up with some uh my companions in the tavern, but I'm looking forward to that dance. Me too. Stay out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Just heads over to the tavern a little more frustrated than he was before. You ready to dance with the Dan in the pale moonlight? <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> dance with the Dan in the pale moonlight. I could actually arrange that if you like. <laughs> uh, Tom, you do you do creepy old people too well. Oh, uh, he does everything <laughs> too well. As someone who has had the pleasure of being at his table a couple times, it's it's good stuff. No, no, I'm not. Let's get into the tavern. <laughs> yes, please. Everybody, tell me one detail about this tavern. There is a chandelier that is elk horns all together, like woven together, and it has candle dripping wax. Sometimes it hits the people, but they don't mind. <laughs> um, it actually has one of those mounted fish uh, over the the fireplace, but it's kind of weird because it's like a swordfish or something that shouldn't really be in a lake like this. Um, everybody in the tavern ha- has some kind of negative emotion going on. They either look like they're desperate, or they look like they're sad, or they look like they're a little hopeless. I think there's um, portraits on all the walls that uh, are clearly older painted and are starting to fade a bit, but they're, they're all of like uh, dancing people with their hands intertwined. And there is not a, if you look closely, not a single person does not have a hand like holding another hand. It's actually pretty spooky because you can't see all the the people belonging to these hands. Not all of them at the same moment. If you focus on a specific part of the picture, it all seems all right, but the big picture (laughs) isn't working out the way it should be. Yeah, and I feel um, it's also a very, very moody and and quiet place. You hear the occasional dripping from the candles and one of the drops lands on the hand of of a really big guy and he doesn't move that hand an inch. There's a barmaid, and she um, she's n- not dressed for for bar service. She looks more like uh, prepared to to go to church or something like this. She, Sunday clothes are worn tonight. Nobody really takes notice of you except her. And she waves you in. Yes, Yalmar, of course, uh, walks up to her. And uh, it's like hasn't even reached her before he orders a a drink, of course. Give me a a pint of your best ale, please. And uh, one for my friend as well. Sure, 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 uh, Father. You're most welcome, please. I'm, I'm sorry, tonight it's already pretty full, but maybe take place at, at the counter if if you 
would be so kind. Christian holds up a finger and he goes, You can take that pint and give it to my friend Ulrika here. I'll have milk. Uh, hot, hot, hot water is fine. Thank you. You know what? Uh, give me two pints. It, we'll sort it out. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, please be seated. Um, uh, I, I hope it's uh, everything is all right. Is, is, the, is the temperature good? Um, it could be warmer. Sure. I, I, I put another log in, into the fireplace. So please, please make yourself welcome over there. You can put your coats on and then we will be back um in in just a second and she uh rushes off to make everything so you are happy christian says to himself not in a very judging tone though i guess everything he says sounds a little bit judgy but he goes i swear to not let my mind be muddled that's very good christian of course you should keep your wits about you were you in danger of that? And Christian, another another moment of the light kind of like brightening behind his eyes. He like looks at the fish on the wall, looks at the candle dripping, looks at the man that didn't that wasn't phased by it, by it dripping on his hand. He goes, "In every room, there's a danger threat level. That man could be a danger. That fish could be a danger." Even the very woman serving us pints could be a danger. Clear of eye, keen of thought. Rika is going to stare menacingly at the fish. <laughs> now that she's heard it could be a danger. <laughs> okay. I think Yalmar is anxiously looking for the barmaid with the with the pints. I'm watching you fish. <laughs> Is it watching back? Arika, does the fish make eye contact with you? I feel like it does. I feel like I feel like that fish's eyes are following me anywhere I go. <gasps> Indeed. Maybe maybe you should do um Vigilance roll. Mm. 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 What? What's pushing you out of your concentration? What happens? Uh, the barmaid comes back and puts the mug of hot steaming water in front of me. I kind of startled because I didn't even notice her walking up. So, uh, what's what's uh, bringing you to our to our place? We don't get visitors this often. Um, Sven, Magnuson, and she immediately pales. What? Uh, well, um, um. <laughs> Like, while this is going on, Ulrika's kind of, like, oblivious to how distressed she is, and she's just, like, pulling little packets out of her, like, traveling pack and making tea. Um, yeah, uh, 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 I'm so sorry for, for, um, being the, oh, gracious. <clears throat> now, okay. now, see, just pull yourself together. We received a correspondence from this Sven Magnusson, and he asked us to come here. I take it that something has befallen him, and that that is why you are distraught? As predicted. She tried to answer, and then she felt really disturbed by Kristen and just <laughs> gazes at him. Afternoon. sips from the milk just uh, yalma actually tries to um, to um, soothe her a bit um, um, uh, reach out her hand and just pats her arm gently um to, to make her 
calm down a bit and maybe be a bit more friendly <laughs> um, as he's like you see we were looking for Sven here but I take it we're not in time what has happened please tell us disappeared some some days ago what's he fit uh, and she looks at you and nods. Only because he said he was worried he'd be fifth. Who? So he was right, which means we're in the right place. Who are you? Are you making tea? Let's just say we are travelers that have seen a few things in our life and try to aid those who need it the most. I it see. it seems your little town might be in need of our aid. That's for sure. And at this moment, the door opens and Oscar enters. You see Oscar this... Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I on. was just going to say, yeah, Oscar comes in. He's, he's clearly, like, twiddling his thumbs in frustration uh, as he makes his way over and just sort of plunks himself in a seat, like, looking real upset. Yeah. The, the bad vibes are pretty, pretty apparent. And... You, you see that Hjalmar is doing his thing, that he calms people down and makes them talk his way. So, um, you, you, you can help us. And she, uh, she tries to get a little bit closer, but probably doesn't want to since you're a priest and so she she's speaking in a half hushed tone you say that many many people are it's like they're sick they they don't talk anymore they're just staring And then she seems to have a very bad memory. You could yeah. try to get more out of her with um, inspiration to, to ground her more. Yeah. Or you can manipulate her and use her distraught feelings with manipulation. No, I will, I will rather try to inspire her to go on talking. Um, see. I uh, I lean in closer as she, I, I sense that she wanted to, but didn't. Or oh, Yalmar leans in closer, um, and he uh, he um, he doesn't. Well, he still has his uh, hand on it, her arm, and he kind of squeezes it gently, uh, and he says, "You see." Me and my colleagues here are very capable people with certain skills. Young Oscar here, Yalma ya motions to Oscar, is, uh, is quite observant and uh, knows a few tricks. Uh, Christian, uh, he waves towards Christian and kind of smiles a little, uh, is quite capable when words don't work anymore so to say and our dear dear Ulrika here she has a way of seeing things a little differently than others we will do what we can to help you of course that is why we are here
Is anybody doing anything to support Yalmar in his endeavor? Uh, yeah. If if no one else is, Oscar sure will. The father, uh, he'll 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 you know lean a little closer and say, uh, the father knows what he does. He he's his learning and his ear are are as God intended. You know he he hears and he believes. And he brings better fortune for us lesser folk. As far as you all can tell, Ulrika has like not been listening, but she just kind of looks up and goes, Hjalmar is a good man. And then goes back to her tea. Hjalmar is a good guide. Wonderful. So Hjalmar, please roll your inspiration. But for each helping party member, you get an additional die. Okay. I actually rolled already, but I can roll again if you like. Please do so. More successes. More successes. More successes. You know, roll those uh, extra three dice. So uh, that's three bonus. Yes. And um, no. <laughs> oh, you had those. You had those other successes. You roll seven dice, you get three successes. Oh. You roll ten dice, you get zero. Oh, yeah, the math oh. does not check out on that. <laughs> Oh my god. I was better with you not helping, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all tried to help and we actually just messed it up because she's real creeped out by all of us. She's like, what are these sick offense? <laughs> she just has a big smile, the creepy smile that I'm trying too hard. He's a good man, I swear. She... I swear he's a good man. You can trust Not me. Not at all brainwashed. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's going well until your friends kick in and then something else happens there's a cat with you which was hiding within the trees or around the corner and it jumps now onto the bar counter and it is looking at uh, the barmaid purse walks over to hjalmar rubs his head against his hand and um, then looks once again at the barmaid with an unblinking stare. And the whole scene freaks you completely out. <laughs> and she is like, well, <sighs> you see, there, there are many strange things happening here and I, I don't feel I, I I could help you. Maybe you should talk to Astrid. Sh she is a, a, in charge of the lumber mill, and sh she knows a lot of people. And and he worked over there. So so maybe talk to her. And Thank then, you. Hjalmar hears a voice in his head. Poor girl. It was such a promising start. Yalma is doing his best to, to push the cat away, but Kitty. Every, everyone who has ever met a cat that wants to be cuddled, you know how hard that can be. Um, uh, it's like he's really, really disturbed by the presence of this cat. You have seen him around other cats before in other cities and other places, and it's never really has seemed to have uh, had that much of a problem with other cats apart from well maybe a bit wary in the beginning but this is really not this is something out of the ordinary he seems almost desperate in his attempts to push him away Ulrika has full on like pulled some like dry travel meat out of her pack and is like waving it at the cat like kitty like, like some dried fish trying to get that cat to come to her Cat, should, cat, 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 cat. Maybe we should go talk to this um, Astrid then. Uh, maybe she can po point us towards this Sven Magnusson's uh, place. Um, Yalmar gets up, really, and he's he's left like one and a half pint on the on the table, which is also something not really ordinary for him to do. Um, as he kind of pushes up from the table and almost flips the chair over in his. Anxious, uh, uh, he's so anxious to get out of there. Uh, Christian goes, uh, yes, please, can we go anywhere else? 
anywhere else. Gives a wide berth to the cat. <laughs> yeah, the cat um, looks disdainful towards the attempts to lure it with fish or <laughs> get rid of it with words. <laughs> it's... It's throwing you the cold shoulder. It's signaling, no, not you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to remember this one. Yeah, I think Oscar's just sort of steely eyeing this cat, like something, something, something about this cat and the way other sort of Hjalmar sort of just disdains. Although he'll he will edge closer, less about the cat, more about the undranken beer. Christian's gonna stand over the barmaid after he stands up his full like form and look down at her and go the milk was delicious you should be proud of yourself and then just turn <laughs> and then start walking Ulrika stands up looks around to make sure the barmaid's not looking directly at her waits, waits till Christian kind of like takes a spotlight and then takes her mug and just hides it under her cloak as they walk out because she's not going to leave her tea <laughs> she's taking her tea with her very well. Uh, Please put down your tea into your equipment. <laughs> no, you don't yeah. have to. No, go but tea. Uh, I'm gonna put it in my gear. Uh, I think Oscar will will take the so like one runs after again. The the one that has the higher um, beer on top. He'll like push it towards the cat and see if the cat will drink from it. It's responsible. No. Picks it up himself. Downs it like a champ. Why am just company, Yoma? Unbelievable choice. <laughs> All right, let's go find an Astrid. Yes. So you leave this place, and um, you enter this uh, down the street and out of the the small village and there's this just giant lumber mill it's actually looking a little bit out of place since it's everything is looking very traditional very rural around here but this this is a masterpiece of technology or at least it was before something really heavy destroyed half of the building um, as you look around, you see um, there's more destruction around. Also, yeah, some of the fisher boats are also hit by violence. Probably a storm or something like this. Uh, while we're on that walk, I think uh, Oscar just informs everyone of his discussion with Dan about how there used to be this dancing um, now there hasn't been the people that went missing, this pull, this other figure, sense of belonging, and things of that nature. It is understandable, though, uh, given everything that has taken place here. Maybe I wouldn't feel like dancing either. Yeah, I just, I wonder if the dancing maybe appeased some, made it happy, seems celebrative, and now it's not getting that, that contact anymore, so it feels like it's got to call the people. Are you talking about, like, a tribute or ritual? Mayhaps. Could be. Hmm. Nicely spotted there, Oscar. He shrugs. I'm the... suspicious of the fish. In the lake? No, the fish that was in the bar. There was a fish in the bar? Yes. <laughs> Alright, well, we can mm -hmm. check that out after we talk with Astrid, maybe. Dancing with elderly. Never a good idea. Why? It's a great idea. Too fragile. Do you, do you often break your dancing partners? Do if, you dance? If they do not break me first. I can't imagine you dancing. Yeah, you're a little, you're a little stiff there, sir. Christian. To really fluidly move to dance. 
there are many things you do not know. Well, I look it's forward. True. Listen, you know what? At the end of our time here, once all things finish, and then like Oscar will reach up and like slap him on the shoulder. I look forward to learning more about you and seeing how you dance. Maybe dancing shouldn't be our first priority. No, Unless aunt. it gets rid of the bad thing, and then it should yeah. be. And we look into that fish in the tavern later. Yeah. All right, is there an Astrid here? Oh, okay. Um, you have a look into the building and you see there are some people trying to repair the damage. And in the middle of them, there is a woman, middle-aged, long blonde hair, and um, she wears workman uh, clothes and um, she is directing people and in, in doing their their jobs and making sure that everything is getting done. And she seems to be a little bit on the angry side of emotions. She turns around. Yes, who's calling? Oscar sort of forces a, a smile on his face, but it's it's a bit a uh, bit less genuine than it usually is. Uh, that would be me. Wonderful. Do you bring the beams? Uh, I do not bring beams, but I heard that you are a woman of immense knowledge in the town, and have possibly some information for us about a friend who called or well wrote. I don't have time for any friends. Can't you see I'm very busy getting everything into the right order right now? Yes, well, mayhaps you're not looking for a sixth to add to the fifth that Sven Magnuson was? And she uh, throws her brows and shakes her head dismissively. I have no idea what you are talking about. But you Woman know, Sven. Bar said you did. There's more of you. Well, if you could please be so kind and get your jobs done, then I may have um, may have time to talk with you. Our job is talking to you. Yeah, see, quicker we'll get out of here is sooner you talk to us. So the more back and forth we're doing right now means the longer you got to deal with us. Christian's going to kind of puff up his chest and crack a knuckle. And he's going to look around at the damage and he goes, It seems this place is broken. It would be a shame for someone to break it more. Christian. Now, 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 no need. No need for any threats here Christian um, is there anything we can do to help uh, speed up this process and so that you might be able to talk to us actually yes the roof is still a mess and I was told we are getting rain tonight I don't want rain on my machinery we have to fix this part over there all right, we fix that real quick, and then then you got time to chit chat, Paddywhack. Sure. All right, let's go. Come on, Christian, boost me on your shoulders. This does not please me. <laughs> yeah, well, this business ain't about pleasure. Let's see what this business is about. <laughs> I think it is about. Yeah, how do you want to? solve this problem by force or agility and who's uh, helping um, agility i think actually jalmar is uh, is uh, pulling up his sleeves as well and yeah. maybe loosen a button in his uh, coat just to, and actually prepares to help as well because yeah i think that's good idea. i think ulrika wearing skirts and all the other things is just going to start wandering like around the edge of the lumber area and looking in the woods for like herbs and medicines or clues or anything she can. She's going to kind of like get the lay of the land while they're up there. 
And you all are like, oh, she's in the woods. She's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's she's in her element. He's not Oscar's not worried about it. But I think he's he's agile. He's used from, you know, leaping from train cars and mm-hmm. moving about in, in fiddled areas to to get quick cash. So I think it's agile for Oscar. Christian's gonna take his jacket off and he's just going to pop his suspenders and get ready. <laughs> Put a bunch oh. of nails in his mouth, get a hammer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Roll up his sleeves. Grum- yeah. Grumble the entire time. Do you want to do this as a group action? One is leading, the others are supporting. Which will give you less successes as a potential, or do you want to roll individually, but with higher chance for failure? What do y'all think? I think we should... Sorry, and I think this might end up being a dangerous task, so there might be physical consequences. I'm down for either. Uh, I know I have a current seven dice pool. I don't know what other people are looking at. I think maybe we should help. <laughs> I think we should let the the agile person take the lead here and we just provide backup. Yeah. You just yeah. like hand him like nails and hammers and pieces yeah. of wood and stuff, yeah. Jump off your back, do do flips, parkour, parkour, parkour. <laughs> I shall be the solid foundation for which you to build this house. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, Yalmar is, even though he is a bit, well, he has a few years under, uh, sorry, uh, Yalmar is, is of age, but he still has a pretty strong physique, actually, so he wouldn't mind just helping out lifting and doing stuff. Yeah, I think you're, you're all lifting and I'm going between two of you as I, I get two successes. Wonderful. Yeah, you're getting the thing done mm-hmm. the the small part of the roof that would endanger the costly parts in the mill is at, at least it is done in a way that everything is safe it's not perfect it's not for a long time but the makeshift work will will get it over the night and that's all you were asked for yeah, no. Oscar's used to Weird little odd jobs. I think for the extra success, uh, Astrid will have a close eye on you and might be a little bit impressed by your work. Yeah, how quick and efficiently he just sort of boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and your teamwork as well. Mm-hmm. You're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. Did so, Lurica find anything in the woods? That's a very good question, Lady Eureka. Where does your uh, search leads you to? What kind of place do you discover? Are you asking me? Yes, I'm asking. I'm terrible at improv. I don't like it when I have to jam. Okay, that's all. <laughs> I can do this uh, too, but. Yeah, I am I am asking you what I find because okay. I have no okay. idea what I should be describing. I've never played this game before. That's fine. You you find uh, a small patch of land. It's uh, at the shore of the lake. And there are some special uh, herbs growing. And you notice some flowers. And as you come close to them, you dip your feet into the water and it makes just the the, the tiniest waves and the ripples go across the mirror of the water surface and for a short moment it's like you can hear something then it's gone again but 
you remember something from your past, something you would like to regain, what is this? Her real name. Yes. And you get this feeling it's out there. You have never been to this place, but but you can feel this connection somewhere out on this lake. It is waiting for you. So she kind of, you know, hangs out for a minute and feels all the all the feelings and just sits with it for a few minutes while her friends are fixing everything. And then she gathers a couple of herbs and flowers and comes back. But she's humming that tune as she walks back up to the uh, lumber mill. Just kind of un unconsciously humming it, not even thinking about it. Just as you walk through the door as you see your friends and Astrid sitting down in the corner of the building, you pass another works person and they are humming it too. Do you know this song? <laughs> the song? What? What song? The one we were just humming together. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I have this feeling I have known it for my whole life. Oh, perhaps it is a local tune. Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels, feels local. <laughs> Thank you. An evening. And, and she hands him a flower. And then she Thank walks you. over to her friends. So, what's this business you want to be talking about? You knew Sven Magnuson? Yeah, yes, he worked for me. Did you know that he had disappeared? I noticed, since he haven't appeared on Burke. People have been disappearing. Yes. And you are here to investigate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And prevent more. Mm -hmm. And hopefully make it stop altogether. Course. In best case scenario, we find them. I understand. But on whom's authority are you acting? I can see a priest, and she is uh, eyeing uh, Kristen. A demoted military officer? He doesn't like that word. I don't like to be threatened yeah, within what? my house, so Listen. I think we are even. No, 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 no. There's oh, no right. Need. He did that thing. Right. Yeah. Christian. There's really no need for, for any rough words between us. We have just showed you how we are willing to help out if, if need be, and mending a roof is not where our helpfulness stops. We are here to try to see if we can shed some light upon this mystery and if we are lucky, retrieve those missing. We have uh, seen many things in our travels before and we do not really uh, act in any anyone's interest more than Yours, of course, and Sven Magnussen, who asked us to come. Just to... 
to be clear about this, um, do you expect any form of payment? No. Good. Very Helping good. out the people of the town is payment enough. Great. Very well. So, how may I be of service? Can you tell us anything about uh, Mr. Magnuson? Um, the, the last few days you were around him, any behaviors, any changes, or anything about the disappearing folk they might have had in common? Well, all of them are get were getting more and more erratic and self-forgotten, staring a lot, and um, forgetting their assignments, which is not very helpful if you try to to lead a business with these work forces did they all work for you some of them who were the other ones that disappeared ones before sven uh sven was working for me i think niels Callen was the first how long ago two months I think. oh he's probably dead reassuring uh, has anyone else shown similar behaviors recently that forgetfulness yes it's growing in intensity and numbers you might have picked it up the uh, town is a little bit <sighs> feeling strangely mm -hmm. Now, my child, could you tell me how many people, or how many souls, reside in this village? And how many of them might be affected by this illness? Only a few hundred. And I don't have the numbers, but I suspect one-fifth, one-quarter, probably, rising. You're saying that their attention drifted elsewhere. Do you think they might have had it attended to a place, or a person, or a thing? Those are all the options. Indeed. All the nouns. <laughs> it seems... Uh Something might have changed around here. Your village wasn't like this before. Can you recall something occurring um, a couple of months back that might have triggered these events? I think actually the disappearance of Niels Kallen was the first event. I'm sorry for butchering <laughs> sorry. this name. <laughs> sorry, no, no, it's not all. Niels Kallen is one of the really league people. Yeah, so. Who had worked on Vesson. <laughs> Which is, yeah, why I keep laughing all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> glad, glad to be in on the joke. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, yeah. I was like, why is this funny? Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. No, it might okay. be the right point to announce that I might have stolen some names for NPCs <laughs> from uh, <laughs> real people without any connections to them. I know, we all do it. it. <laughs> so, yeah, there's this so... wonderful NPC named Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> there are fully, uh, in a soon-to-be-published BTM book, people named Ian, Rick, and Mark. <laughs> so, Amazing. Different last names, but... Yeah. yeah uh... Sorry, I will, I will stop giggling every time you see it. Say it. <laughs> yes, the... Yeah, his disappearance was the first incident, and after that, the other strange things started to happen. When did the dancing stop? The dancing? On the docks? She was thinking, and then as she start, started humming, she 
she uh, looks at you and says, uh, I think you, you should be really careful. Your friend, that's one of the things they have in common. They start humming. Oh, the like sang it to me. But then I heard that man doing it too. We should talk to him then. And she yes. points at the man with the flower. We'll we'll talk to him. Did you did you touch the lake, Ulrika? Yes, it's delightful. Okay, all right. <laughs> and like Oscar like pinches his the bridge of his nose like just, just with my feet, just a little. Okay, let's see. You did you say that people start humming a tune? And yes. But before that, comes... when, when did the dancing? The dancing's important. When did the dancing stop? I don't know of any dancing. People used to dance on the dock in the lakes. <sighs> they had to before my time. So. Uh, the, do you know of this Nils before he disappeared? Uh, had he met someone? Had he found something? Has he been anywhere? He was kind of a loner. For a very long time, he, he tried to uh, get in touch with them, uh, some of the girls, but um, I take he wasn't the kindest guy, so they avoided him. But yeah, yeah, he he was talking about a girl. You're right, and. Nobody knew her. She must have been radiant from his words, but to be honest, all the radiant young girls are already married off. So we we took it as some sort of daydream. What was her name? I don't know. I've never mentioned her. Her name. It's just like. This, this wonderful woman he met. Mm. You say where I meet her? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she has a really, long, really long thought about this, and then she says, "That's the strangest thing." You know. This place is pretty old, and there is an old abbey on an isle in the lake. It's, it's in ruins, nobody goes there, but some lonely people from time to time to have a place without any other persons around them. And he mentioned he met her there. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. Now, just one more thing. Um, where could we find someone that could take us to this abbey? You could try with the fishermen, but they are unbearable at the moment. They are humming. No, they're just pesky people who don't see when it's necessary to help each other. Well, they need my mill to repair their boats and all the other stuff, but they're not willing to support me in my endeavor to repair it. Well, maybe they are afraid that that, that monstrosity over there, I point towards the machine, um, is going to replace them in some way, and they don't want that to happen. <laughs> like, oh, like, you know, Oscar sort of steps up. Uh, I, I think what uh, my lovely friend means here is you are entirely right, and that good people want things like we, like we did, should step in and help those around us, you know, tit for tat. But, yeah, so, you know, don't mind that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah those, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, those, those fishermen, uh, how dare they not listen and help you? Uh, 
thank you for your time, uh, my child, and um, I hope this endeavor of yours uh, works out well for you. Thank you yeah. very much. If you, uh, you figure anything else out or anything else happens, uh, just we'll, we'll be around town. Uh, thank you again, and if you're, you know, happy to patch up something else if you, you, you need it just after when we're done. Thank you, ma'am. And he, like, tips his hat. Uh, Ulrika, you saw someone? Yes, that man over there. He was humming the same song. And then I gave him a flower. Mighty sweet. Uh, we should probably talk to him. I asked him what the song was, and he said he'd always known it? Like it was part of this place? That checks. They, they felt belonging in the calling of the water. But no better, Ulrika. We got weird water things. You shouldn't be sticking your feet in the water. Well, how else do you check for them? Just be careful. Of course. Yeah, let's go. Let's go check out this workman. Um, Yalmar turns to Christian. Um, Christian, my dear man. Um, if we cannot find any fishmen to take us to this island of the lost abbey would you might would you be able to if i acquire a boat or some or something take us there i'm sure i could be able to help us arrive oh uh, well let's see if we can acquire a boat perhaps even a ferryman or something one moment i th seem to have misplaced my tobacco pouch and Christian turns back and goes to Astrid and goes, and like stops and goes, Froiken, Astrid, pardon my threat against your meal. I believe we are all a little bit on the. Uh, and she sees something behind your back, and then there's a loud crashing noise, and she's like, do you know how much this costs? And she beats around you and then it's off and there's turmoil. What a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christian's got a little crush. Catches oh, up Christian. with the group. <laughs> uh, yeah, do we see this? Uh, was that that man that Ulrika was talking about? Is he in this incident or is he on another part? Um... He is he's probably at the edge of the perimeter. Uh, perimeter. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. In some storage area. Yeah. It's just, I guess we should check with him real quick and then see if we can find a ferryman. If you get... Sorry. If Ulrika and Oscar want to check with this gentleman, I think Hjalmar and I can find a boat or ferryman. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go talk to my friend again. Yeah. Friends of friends. Wonderful. I don't know his name, though, so you'll have to ask. I'll ask. Thank you. Mm hmm And I think this is the perfect time for a break. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, everybody. So uh, grab... Hydrate. Hydrate. Grab a snack. Everything else like <laughs> that. Uh, and we shall be right back. Did I freeze? I feel like I froze. You froze a little, yes. yeah. Okay. We can still hear you, though. Okay, perfect. Well, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and also, just wanted to throw out here, if I had not mentioned before, the ambiance and everything that you're listening to was uh, was arranged and composed by a uh, Michael Gelfi. Uh, and there will be a link dropped below. There you can check out his uh, Patreon and his YouTube. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. And we shall be back in a uh, quick 10 minutes. Yeah, take a break. Wonderful. Even though we're not live, still take a break. Breaks are good. <laughs> yes. Breaks yeah. are good. Stretch but, your legs. But, but stay away from the fish. Stay away from the yes. fish. Yeah, stay away from the fish. And, and be careful. With, drink water. Don't dip your feet in the water. Aww. <laughs> and don't listen to it. Don't listen to the water. Don't listen to the water. We'll be right back. <laughs>
And we're back. And we're back. I hope everybody had a wonderful break. I know I certainly did. I had such a good time. <laughs> and out of ten. <laughs> Would break again. <laughs> I got new coffee, so, you know, I'm doing great. It is the nectar of life. Hashtag Jeffish coffee. Oh, it's very hot. Oh. oh, careful. I can't do... Okay. I say it's on the stream. I love Deathwish Coffee, and I love that you all have this great relationship with them. If I drink a cup of, like, half Deathwish, half another coffee, my anxiety goes through the roof. And, like, I mainline caffeine all day, but that's, like, too much caffeine at once for me. Like, uh, I, 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 I can't do it. I feel you. I can't actually drink coffee because the caffeine gives me anxiety. So I tried Deathwish once, and we were doing, like, a one-to-one -one mixture with a different coffee because we knew, like, it was really strong. And I had... Usually I drink two or three cups of coffee in the morning, so I had two or three cups of it. And then I was just, like, sick for the rest of the day. I was, like, vibrating and, like, angry. Oh. Okay, you need to clue me in what the frick is Deathwish coffee? It's a it's a very high caffeine coffee. It's 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 supposedly the strongest coffee in the world. Yeah. It went it went to the space station. Yeah, it's yep. like it's like extra, extra, extra caffeinated coffee. I, I have wow. some that is only for emergencies. It's behind a, a, a thing of glass where it's like break glass if, <laughs> break if, if needed. Because like, like a for my birthday, Meredith and Mike, friends of the stream. Hi, Mayor Mike. We love you. Hi, Mayor Mike. Uh, sent me some wonderful coffee that's like nice and rich and everything like that. But the death wish only comes out in the greatest emergencies. Mm, okay. okay, yeah, I don't drink coffee myself, but I understand the feeling of the need to go <laughs> the extra mile sometimes. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Wonderful. My, uh, okay, just one question. This, uh, this is totally off topic. But okay. You guys, you have glasses, and your screen doesn't reflect from the glasses. What do you do? I because I could only see my screen in the glasses. For, for me, it's a matter right now of the lighting and the mm -hmm. way and like the time of day. Um, yeah. If I record later at night, where most of the light is coming from my computer, mm -hmm. then it actually does reflect pretty badly. Yeah. Um, so should, uh... Because I have all this natural light hitting my face from the side. So like if you had a different light on it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. It's better. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I've got a light that's shining at this side of my face. So Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. okay, cuz you're a professional and got all that. I've I've only done like Very a professional. voice podcast before. Yeah. The Those lighting doesn't doesn't really matter that much. And uh actually the light outside is almost going away, so it don't cannot rely right. on that. Whereas we're we're just hitting noon where I am. So this is like full yeah. Sun overhead. <laughs> like, I have the blinds closed. This is how brightly lit I am. Can you imagine how hard it is to filter and edit sunlight out of a podcast? <laughs> 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 it takes hours. That's like yeah. th that last episode you had, Tom. I was like, it's kind of bright in here. It's kind of bright in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, could you please turn your brightness down a bit? <laughs> yes. Gonna... But. But I love your shining eyes. Yeah, but I'm gonna, if I do this, make it a little better. Yeah. Yes. Really though, like it, it, it's all about having a light or a lamp like right behind your monitor, kind of yeah. at okay. you. So in the future, okay. if you want to like turn a little bit, that might help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we know. It's like all, all the glare you're getting from me is actually from the window more than it okay. is from the computer. Lighting yeah. design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lights. Lights, lights. Yeah. Okay. Matt. Jesus Christ, stop it. Is that my cat? No? My cat is playing with the blinds, is what's happening. Uh, and I they're very you. loud. I told you he's the spawn of Satan. You shouldn't listen to him. <laughs> Nobody can hear me except for you. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. You know, we <laughs> shared this very special bond, this relationship. Like yeah, a priest yeah. to his entity. <laughs> the cat. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, no. Yeah. yeah. Mm. As Fun. we were talking about uh, light, <laughs> lighting, lightning, light stuff. Yes. All the... <gasps> I got distracted by a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> there's there, there's a cat. Oh, 
cat. It's, it's, Those watching in the future now, you know what that means. You have to take a drink. There's a cat on the stream. Take a drink. There's a Wednesday. Is that, is that a rule? Yeah. It I, is. I only have water, but is that okay? Oh, yeah, that's perfectly yeah. fine. More tea it is. <laughs> That is awesome, and it's so funny when you're in a Zoom meeting on in in uni, and uh, there's like 150 people in the in the in the lecture, and then all of a sudden a cat walks across the screen. And you can see like 15 people going like, mm, "Cat!" <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, and we're professional." <laughs> Pandemonium breaks out. <laughs> oh, women's yeah. eyes are so pretty. <laughs> Okay. okay, let's right. see. Can we return from Perdemonium? Oh, um, Perdemonium. <laughs> Instant regret. So, <clears throat> storyteller voice, where are you? It's gone. It's back. Very well. The sun is going into hiding behind the mountains. And so the whole valley fell into twilight. Oscar and Ulrika had a short talk with the works person, but there wasn't much to gather from them. They were all this time babbling about this one mountaintop they always wanted to climb and always wanted to see down into the valley from up there but never got to it was a strange conversation and it was more like they were talking to themselves and not to the inquirers In the meantime, uh, Kristen and Hjalmar managed to not get a ferryman. They, um, they react reacted badly to having seen the two going to the sawmill. There seems to be something going on between these two groups, sawmill workers and fishermen. But it's not your task to get involved into local struggles like this. You see that some of the boats are in disrepair, but by the power of mediation skills and some loose coin, you managed to get a small boat. And so all four of you gather at the boat and you notice that there's a fine mist coming from the lake, finding its way into the streets. And then, thanks to the strong arts of Kristen, you row out into the beginning evening. Soon nothing from the construction site is heard anymore. No talks from the people in the village. No birds. It's quiet. And the lake is flat like a plane of glass. During daytime you could see into the ground meters and meters deep the clear water but now shadows grow down there and then we have this 
feeling of not being alone anymore. And everybody rolls for vigilance. Ooh. That's the first test I passed. Just throw it out there. <laughs> Oh, it doubled up on mine for some reason. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. We both. Very well. Um, Yalmar and uh, Oscar, they find someone have joined them on the boat. It's the cat watching you. Kitty. By the love of God. Yes, it is the love of God that drew me closer to you, for sure. So can you tell me, I, you all see Yalma actually speaking directly to the cat in the, in the boat. Um, can you tell me why you choose to emerge at this moment? I thought I was rid of you. Maybe you could answer this question for yourself. Why would I appear in a moment like this? I don't need you here, and I, you are not welcome. Could you please remove yourself? You're making our work here harder. Harder? I am not screaming on a lake. I'm merely laying here. Yalma kind of realizes what he's doing. Looks to his... Yeah, Oscar's just watching. ...colleagues and calmly sits down again. Um, totally ignoring... Um, the cat and the fact that he has been standing up yelling in the boat. <clears throat> you're a you're a special kitty, ain't you? And Oscar will like hold his hand out to the cat and just watch to see what it does. Oh, please, son, don't don't touch him. Don't you don't want anything to do with him. Does the cat smile? Maybe. Ask the cat about the fish. I will not speak to the cat. You were just speaking to the cat. Uh, I, it's preposterous. It's, I'm not speaking to the cat. We can see you speaking to the cat. Has everyone had too much Brandifin except for me? Do you not see him speaking to the cat? I see somebody speaking to the cat, but the cat is not speaking back. Not to us. Oscar, can you do me a favor and put a lamp on the front of the boat? <laughs> yeah, I could put a lamp on the front of the boat. He, he seems a little remiss to have to step away from the cat, like, watching it a little. Mm -hmm. Oscar Keep will work. hum in tune with Ulrika. <laughs> and it is this moment that Ulrika and Kristen become aware of the voice it's not in your heads. It's a real voice out there, muffled in the mist. suddenly gripped by a deep feeling of sadness. There's something missing. Someone is mourning.
How how does this feel for Kristen? It's very unsettling. I would let, prefer to hear any other song but this one. Um, he kind of grips the oars of the rowboat tighter and then tries to put a little bit more back into it. It's like, if we just find this damn abbey, it'll stop the singing and the, and the humming. Marika, what do you do? I feel like Ulrika is used to sadness and she kind of just breathes it in and sits in it and thinks about that feeling she had earlier of maybe being able to find the thing she was missing. And you start to get her understanding. Hinden blåser mjukt, hinden blåser mjukt över gröna träd. Berget kallar oss från främjan. Vi skulle alla vilja hela dess dröm. You have this feeling there should be somebody answering. Place role for observation. My words roll. Be Dixie and Christian, right? Or, or should the rest of us know? No, it's mm-hmm. it's Ulrika. Oh, it's Ulrika. Yeah, it's just oh, me. okay, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Dixie and Christian. <laughs> there's. What's <there's>, Ulrika? <laughs> there's more. And I believe you hear actually two voices. And you have this impression there should be three, but there aren't. There are notes unsung, words unspoken, and it's just unbearable. You take one mental condition, which one? Uh, I'm gonna go with hopeless. How does this make you feel hopeless? Because she wants to um, be the third voice or hear the third voice and she can't. It's like right at the edge of her mind. And no matter how hard she thinks about it or how hard she tries, she just can't figure out what needs to be put there. Like she can see the hole, but she can't figure out what plugs it. And it is just going to bother her until she finds out. It is only for a brief moment. Then everyone who wants to see it sees the figure down in the shadows. A slender person diving deep down there between some fish. And for a very short second, you see the most delicate and beautiful hand you ever got sight of. And then it's gone. Whoa. I think Yalma turns to the cat and stares at it and says, is this some of your games? Is this your doing? I'm only in games of words. And you know, I always tell the truth, so no. Yalma looks a bit huffed and turns to the others. You all saw that, didn't you? 
Yeah, you there's a... The shape in the water. Yeah, it's a pretty lady. You all see that she didn't quite touch it, but, like, when, when the hand outstretched, like, Ulrich almost, like, I don't know, as a reflex, kind of, like, reached out toward it, but then it disappeared too fast for her to even get near the water. And I think if you reach out your hand, I think, like, Oscar makes a motion to grab it himself and to hold your hand and give it a squeeze and almost try and ground Ulrika there. Hey there. But, uh, yeah, there was a, a, a beautiful woman in the water, which is what we're searching for. I, I wonder if maybe, uh, and he'll, like, mm, and he'll try and, like, hum to the water and see if there's a reaction. The mm. voices are silent again. All right, let's get to the. He squeezes Ulrika's hand again. Let's get to that. Uh, that Abby. We have to find the missing one. The missing, the missing one. There's someone missing, other than the five. Yeah, there were. There were two voices, and there should be three. There's two. a. There's a. It's like a piece of fabric ripped. Ripped on the side. All right. We'll find the third. That's good. Good catch there, Ulrika. Uh, what was one of the voice like? The the lady and was what was the other one like? What was the other voice I heard, Tom? They they are hard to distinguish. They mm -hmm. sound pretty pretty alike. I, I I don't think so, but I I can't tell. All right, they're similar. Okay, all right, that's good. Is this anything like anything we encountered before? Does this remind us of something or some folklore or or something that we've heard of? I'm sure you have heard of creatures like this. How much is determined by your learning role? Ah, yes, learning. I am much less. I can't succeed on my good roll. <laughs> I'm just going to wander headfirst into death. <laughs> yeah, this has not been a, a, a well rolled <laughs> game. My Just cat's roll. back, though. I think she might uh, be the devil. <laughs> Os Oscar, do you roll one die for that? Um, with the fact that I am angry, yes. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I am not well learned. I did not go to school. <laughs> How unfortunate. <laughs> so, Hjalmar. There are different kinds of water vessel out there. One of the most uh, famous is the Neck. It's a creature with uh, a strong relation to music it said that it sitting on its stone close to water and plays the flute or violin or something like this and people get entranced by the music sometimes dancing to their death but you've seen a shape that's not fitting this description. And necks aren't usually singing. They are spirits of the woods and of the trees, like woodwives or ashwives. And they are also the ones from the water. I think they are called Syura. The lake wives, usually solitary creatures, but if Ulrika is right, there might be more than one of them here, usually not hostile to humans, but emotionally manipulating. So, if these are lake spirits, hmm. 
I'm thinking, Ulrika, my dear, mm. you said something about there supposed to be three voices and only two left? Yes. So, what if one of these are missing and that is why they are acting out? We have to find them then. Maybe the first missing person is Nils. Maybe they... Do maybe they ran off with one? Yes, maybe. He's not... A beautiful maiden. Mm -hmm. He had met someone and they seemed pretty keen on each other and if they ran away and she is missing, maybe the others are acting out. I don't know. They that would feel, make sense. Yes, they feel that, that their belonging is not correct. Christian, do you have something to say? Christian's been like furiously chewing on tobacco and he goes, he goes, fishing boats and lumber mill destroyed. Spirit might be a lake spirit or something. Fishermen have fished one out of the water. That's why they're missing. Could be. Could be. The fish on the wall. Could be. I was concerned about that fish. It was almost looking at me. It might be a different shape. Um, let's continue on towards this island. Let's see if... Check the can. abbey. Yeah. Shed some light on this. And don't know if you realize it, but uh, the name of the town, it's actually Enslig Het, which means loneliness. In... Well, that's discomforting. Could be. Could be. Continue rowing. No, I just hold the lamp. <laughs> and Yalmar keeps eyeing the cat. You know, if you don't like the cat being around, maybe you could try asking it why it sticks around. Oh. Dear boy, sadly this is a cat that you cannot really send away or mistreat to make it leave. Well, not mistreating it, but maybe maybe if you just try talking to it. Maybe it, it just needs something and then it'll go away once it's gotten what it needs. It taunts me. It wants me to listen to it, and I, I refuse to. You yes. leave scraps out for an animal. It continues coming back after for more scraps. Trust me, if I could starve this hellish beast, I would. Plank. Andy. So many other things that are getting starved. Um, sorry, you aren't listening to me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I never would have wanted to interrupt your conversation. But may I point out, I think we are reaching the landing stage. Mm -hmm. Oh, careful as you do it. We're gonna hit into the- oh, Christian. <laughs> I am not as deft as I am strong. <laughs> you are indeed, dear Christian. Strong you are indeed. Get me off this boat. Oh, Nasser just scrabbles up <laughs> and land. I'm done with this. Take the rope in the boat and not to the tongue of the, where, you know, where you wrap around the rope, and then I go and I try to find something to do a quick knot on, so it's just a, a, like a slip knot, so I can just pull it. We need to make a quick getaway. You're doing this great. You're very su su uh, successful at tying down this boat. And for the next scene, we are using a track from, from the official Vessen soundtrack. Ooh. Ooh. Which I still yeah. can't hear, sadly. Watch I'm the so video. Sorry. It'll be yeah. on the pod. Yeah, if you watch the video later, you can hear all the music. Mm -hmm.
you get off the landing stage and you don't take too long to find the ruins of an old abbey. Some of the stoneworks are still there as there is a staircase leading down into the darkness of an underground facility. All right. Any chance anyone's got a torch? I have boat lantern. All right, boat lantern. Good thinking, Christian. Uh, do you want to go first, or should I? I'm, I'm pretty uh, good at, at being, you know, a little careful when I move. How we, how we feeling, the rest of y'all? I think this is something that's more in your wheelhouse, Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, Could we right. sneak down? Yeah, I mean, yeah. What if someone's here? Yeah, that's the point of sneaking. Because if someone's there, then they don't immediately see you. I've... Right. That's what I'm saying. I'll go with you. Yeah, alright. How about both of us uh, sneak, sneak down? I'll bring up the rear with the father. Yeah. You, you will with the rear with the father. Um, I'm gonna roll my stealth. Yeah, yeah. Gonna just sort of stealth our way there. Trying to pick up anything, but not get caught. Woo! Beautiful. Success! Yes. I have not succeeded on two rolls. Same! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Actually love, like, constantly failing during one-shots, though, because it's fun when everything just goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. And now it's very fine as you walk down this downtrodden stone stairs, step by step, muffled echoes. You are entering a place which is taken away from this mountain. Some very, very, uh, some people who are dead for a very long time put a lot of effort to make this place strong and eternal. There's some doors with dark rooms behind them. But you pick up a trail in the dust, their footsteps, and you follow them. And then you reach a door. Behind this door, there's a room full of shelves. Books and scrolls are in there. It's a library. Oh, ew. <laughs> and this place looks like somebody made camp here. I definitely start looking at the scrolls and books and trying to figure out what they are. You go through them, and you realize some of them are holy scriptures for sure. Some are more on the historical side of things, but it doesn't take long until you find the interesting stuff. There, books, tomes, Full of secret knowledge. You... You find a grimoire containing spells and secret ingredients as to potions. Put that in my bag. <laughs> and then you find two things. One of them is a thin folder it's title is saying the voice and then the other thing it just spells Ulrika 
and we return to Kristen. I take it you're you're waiting outside with young Slits, right? I've got eyes peeled, the pistol is out, the hammer has been cocked back on the pistol, and just like continuously like looking back and forth. Pulls some chewing tobacco, puts it in his lip. Yalmar. Oh. Sorry. Um, this situation, it mirrors something from your past. There was a, an evening your father took you out for the hunt. It was the first time you were supposed to shoot something. What went wrong? Christian kind of thinks back to that moment, and he remembers when he was smaller, much smaller, a boy, a lad, still always trying to make his dad proud. Uh, they had been tracking an elk for quite a while, um, tracing it through over through the snow into like the foothills of a mountain range near his home, and it had gotten to the point where they had it dead in his sights and Christian hesitated to kill it because he didn't want to kill something that was like innocent uh, that hadn't harmed him or his father um, and while he was like kind of aiming and kind of hesitating and kind of like blinking a little bit his father kept on, like, repeatedly getting louder and louder, saying, like, take the shot, take the shot. And then until finally his father just was like, Christian! And it panicked Christian, and he just kind of pulled the trigger, and it just kind of... The whole thing went wrong. He completely missed the elk. The gun kind of, like, jumped out of his hands, and he got a... Uh, 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 his, his hide tore in two by his father. Present present Kristen do it there's something between the trees a slender silhouette is this the voice again are your friends in danger pull the trigger it's moving just a little bit you can see it you aim at it boy take the Shot. What do you do? I whisper and I go, I can do it. And Yalmar can, Yalmar can hear him. He says, I can do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do and, what? and after Yalmar says, do what? He's going to take the shot. That was loud. But Yama, do you see this light? I see the light. Finally. Over there, in the chapel, Yalmar was ready to scold Christian for firing so close to his, well, face and ear. Um, still has a ringing sound in, in his left ear. But he kind of lost track and you could always see him raising his hand, going like, and then stops. And he stares towards the abbey, or, or the ruins of the abbey starts wandering towards it. Finally. Maybe answers. Uh, 
uh, Christian, I will be right back. There's just something I need to... He is a big boy. ...to check. Yes, yes, just check something. He mumbles as he continues towards... Is there a light? Do I see? Yeah, there is a light. Given the windows are broken, stained glasses lying on the floor, grasses growing over the splinters, but there's light from a candle. Oscar. Yes. See yes. your Arika in the library. Mm -hmm. And somehow seeing her doing her work with this complicated letter stuff. <laughs> it's not your thing. You're thinking about dancing, aren't you? Yeah. Of course. Last year, there was the opportunity to dance. I didn't take it. You didn't take it, yeah. There was a boy who really liked you. What would you give to change things? To get this chance? Almost anything. Well, you you feel something on your shoulder, warm, comforting, inviting. I think Oscar sort of reaches out to to touch it at first. Turns around a bit, looks at it. It's a hand. A boy's hand. Elpheus standing in front of you. Elfie, how'd you get here? Thought we left you back at the house. I'm I think I'm truly here, but I could. Do you know what time it is? I don't. Can't really read a clock. <sighs> it's been a year, a whole year to the day. Been a, been a year? Yes. And at this moment, drinking cider, and I will be dancing. Will you join me this time? Promised I wouldn't dance until we were done here. dance with you, though. Again. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll dance with you, Alfie. Come with me. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. I'll, 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 be, I'll be back. She t turns around, like, kind of distracted, but does she see anything? No. Oh, There's okay. Oscar. Holding something invisible, turning, and is to leave the room. Going back upstairs or going to like a different room downstairs? Hard to discern right now. Okay, she keeps looking at her book and she says, oh, okay, have fun. Let me yell if you need anything. Yeah. And you're getting swallowed by the darkness. 
We were like the two worst people to send down here by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Rika. You have these two documents. Mm -hmm. Which one do you open? Uh, the one with my name on it first. An envelope, and there's some very brittle uh, parchment in it. And you can you can see something. Letters, but not in a language you you would understand. From from a knowledge point of view. It's much more of an emotional understanding. Do you remember where you've been born? She doesn't remember where she was born, but she remembers being very young and a cottage in the woods with two very kind parents and a younger sister who she hasn't seen in almost 30 years. She hadn't remembered that moment until just now. What was the name of your sister? She thinks about it for a minute, kind of closes her eyes, and then out loud to no one in particular. She says, Anna. The lips and tongue form this name, but spoken out, it sounds differently. Much more complex. Difficult to say in a human language. And instinctively, you tap into your skills, your gift. Outside, there's a ripple on the water. And you feel something drawing closer. Wind and blows a mirk, the wind and blows a mirk, the bagren. As she hears that, and as it gets louder, she's going to kind of tuck the, the voice document away along with the Ulrika document um, into her, her satchel and just start kind of walking back upstairs. I'm assuming that she's probably heard the gunshot at this point, too, so. Yeah, probably. Gunshot outside, Kristen. There's something warm and sticky on your hand. We can't hear you. Master muted. I uh, take a moment and I uh, l look down at my hand, but still kind of like wary for the shape that's in the trees. You, you feel something wet running, dripping. Your target's so far away, how, how could the blood reach your hand?
I'm going to look around and see if there's anything else, anybody else, any other hunters or anything like that. It is you, but you feel somebody else's eyes resting on you, judging. Hello? Will you just stand there and wait for it to die? I, n n no, I, I, I can handle it. I just have to find it first. You don't need to be so terse. I'm waiting long enough. Um... And Christian puts up his firearm, and he pulls out a knife, and starts making his way, trying to find the shape. You leave the abbey. You get him to the forest. Actually, close to the shore. There are some high plants growing, and, and between them lies a body. With the breast still heaving. Wait. It's not an elk. But but that 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 couldn't be. Uh and Christian starts kind of like saying over and over, How did you get here? You're not supposed to be here. How'd you get here? As he gets closer to the body. What did you promise to yourself? I would never strike down someone that was defenseless again. Not again. What do you want to strike down? Enemies of mankind. Darkness. The things that... go around the edges. Why? To make you proud. To redeem myself. So don't ask for Alex. Then give me monster. Here you go. And drop the knife and pull out the saber. And make my way closer to the body. And he starts saying, Get up. Get up. Are you so weak and helpless that one shot takes you off your feet? Monster. Lurer of men. Bringing them into the water. Are you so tough now? I do not see toughness. I only see weakness. Get up. It has difficulties with that. It can push up its torso a little. And Christian goes, well, maybe if you can't do it yourself, maybe I can help you. And he goes to grab it, to, to heave it up. Describe the beautiful woman locking her eyes with yours. She has what one might consider sickly, but in this moment it's kind of shines pretty well in like the, the varied moonlight that kind of breaks through the clouds. Uh, sickly green skin waterlogged hair that's kind of 
just clinging to every surface that it's on to. Seems like no matter how much she's out of the water, just consistently just just covered, soaked. Um, very, very yellow eyes, webbed fingers, and what could be if it was makeup, but it's probably not makeup, it's probably the silt that's on the bottom of a lake, kind of stained from crying. She reaches out with her hand to your face. What do you do with your saber? Uh... Hmm. Oh, you got me in a tight circle here. Okay. Uh, Christian's gonna start saying, I solemnly swear not to be corrupted, bloodied or weakened by the spawn of the underworld. I swear not to let my mind be muddled, clear of eye, keen of thought, pure of deed. I swear to put the society before my own ambitions and emotions. My life, and he kind of grits his teeth, for my comrades. I pledge my life to you, Holy Artemis, for the battle against Vison and the protection of mankind. And he stabs the saber in the midsection. This is the picture that Uri covered nests in the moonlight on the shore of this lake. Has the singing stopped, or is the singing still happening? Right now, it's silence. She... sees him run this, this woman through, and she just, she just screams. You have ne you, you, you almost never hear her talk above a whisper, so this is like a first for you. And she just screams, "What have you done? What did you do, Christian? The, the singing stopped. Christian, it stopped. It stopped, and you did it." And Christian kind of like turns like quick looks at Ulrika and goes not this time I'm not gonna let anyone down this time not this time the singing it was bad it was awful it must have stopped it had to stop and I stopped it I did it we were supposed to find the third voice not silence one of the first two nothing but trouble I, I don't know that that's true we have to find the last one. Where's Oscar? You can't just kill them. It doesn't work that way. You know it. Spawn of the underworld. I swear to not let my mind be muddled. You took that oath like I did. And he kind of like turn. I, I guess. I guess he like. Let's like pulls the, the the saber out, putting his boot on the midsection and pulling it out, and kind of turns and goes, points with the saber, goes, "You took that oath. Yalmar took that oath. Oscar took the oath." And she kind of like shakes shakes her finger in his face a little bit, and she goes, "You know, pure of deed, pure, before your own emotions." You weren't thinking about the rest of us. You were thinking about yourself. But the boat, and the singing, and you and, you and Oscar humming along with it. No, I, I did what had to be done. I did. I think that that's what set all this off in the first place. We were sent here to restore balance. I regret nothing. 
and he takes the, the saber and like takes his arm with the uniform and he kind of cleans off the blood off of it and puts it back in the in the sheath. We must find Hjalmar and Oscar. Tell them the deed has been done. I have to check something first. Rika's gonna go sit by the entrance to the underground with the, with the lantern and start looking at the uh, voice document while everybody else is doing whatever they're doing. Wonderful. We are entering the chapel. There's a candle burning on a stone altar. The benches have been removed a very long time ago. A headless figure of a saint waiting with open arms for visitors. Wolfsbane, the cat, walks over some rubble and sits down next to the big stone block. Why are you here? You shouldn't be able to be here. You are not welcome at this place. Go away. I am not. What does make you so sure of this? This is a holy place and you are everything but. Leave, foul beast. Very well. Do you think you can pull through this alone? Maybe if you leave, he will speak to me. I, maybe I can't hear him because you're shattering in my ear. Sure. The Almighty, intimidated by a cat walking on his lawn. You are no mere cat. You know this just as well as I do. Well, finally, one theologist puts down the pen and says, he who tempts is mightier than he who creates. I would take this as a, as a victory. See you later. And we'll spin leaves. Yalmar collapses on his knees in front of this broken down statue of the saint. And he's not aware of it, but I think gentle tear drops starts falling on his cheek. He turns towards the light and whispers, Why don't you speak to me? Why don't you guide me? Why? Why am I alone in this? There is no voice. No answer. Only the tapping of feet. There's someone in the shadow. Yalma lets out a howl, a howl of pain and a howl of loneliness and desolation. And kind of tears the his collar off and throws it after the cat there into the no, darkness. 
And you notice there's no cat. There's a boy dancing in the shadows who has given in completely into the dream. You are, Oscar, on the fairground of a village far, far away in a forest. And there's a dance held to crown the summer queen. And you're dancing with her, Alfie, to become his king. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Um, it's, it's vigorous and it's nonstop and it's, it's full body. And I think it almost shakes the ground beneath with the effort and, and how, how forceful, uh, that just the movements are and the, the almost, the, it's almost, uh, almost unwieldy, almost it perhaps seems like possessed in, in the way this, this agile body just moves, uh, you know, feeling truly this this element that he'd sort of coaxed himself from doing before and this idea of a better name where it hadn't actually worked. It it's all going so fast and so colorful. All the all your senses try to bear the impressions hammering in onto you. Fear, the tipsiness from the cider. You feel the ground beneath your feet, naked feet, cutting into them. But you know you can't stop. There's no stopping. Yama, Oscar is dancing in the in the splinters of the church windows. Shrapnel's cutting into his feet. I stumble to my feet, almost feeling drunk as I st he staggers towards Oscar. Oscar, Oscar. Oscar, for the love of God! <laughs> Ain't no God loving here. <laughs> and I think he just, he keeps dancing. He, can, he knows he can't stop. He has to be the last one. Yalma tries to to catch the boy to make him stop. They have to stop this, and and Yalma can't do it alone. Not not now that both God and the devil has forsaken him. He's desperate for Oscar. He's desperate for Ul for Ulrike, and he's desperate for Christian to help him stop this. So he tries to reach out and catch the boy to stop him from dancing. Please roll force. If you don't stop him, he will take consequences. I will actually push this as I fail. Truly blessed video. I fail. Yes. And Oscar just take a physical condition. Yeah, I think he's uh, wounded. <laughs> I think so too. Blood mingles with dust. And I take a I mental take condition. One... Yes. Or, no, sorry, you take a physical condition because it was a physical role. Oh, of course. Oh, I am Wally. Exhausted. My beautiful boy. Mm. 
Oh, exhausted is a physical condition. Yes, that's right. Yeah, exhausted physical, yeah. 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 And you you can't catch him. I think Hard... Yal- Yalmar is, is desperately trying to keep up with a mo- much younger and a quicker boy, but it kind of just makes him feel his age and, and the clumsiness of his body and until he collapses in a in an exhausted pile. You notice looking up to the dancing boy that the candle is gone. Nothing radiant is in this place. There's no cat. There's only you and Oscar in dire need of your help. I think Yalma desperately, really desperately starts to pray and would like to if this is possible, bless um, Oscar so that he can roll to break out of this trance. This sounds very good to me. Let's do this. So as, yeah, sorry, it's as he fails to, to, to um, physically reach the boy, he starts to, with his strong strong the, the, the kind of voice that you use on, in your sermons to reach everyone to touch everyone's soul it starts to Fader vår som är i himlen helgat vare ditt namn tillkommer ditt rike ske din vilja så som i himlen så och på jorden vårt dagliga bröd giv oss idag och förlåt oss våra skulder så som och vi förlåter dem oss skyldiga är och inled oss icke i frästelse utan fräls oss ifrån ondo ty riket är ditt och makten och härligheten i evighet amen and then place, he places a blessing upon Oscar Oscar hmm? something is wrong something Alfie Alfie, he isn't seeing you. He isn't looking into your eyes. I'm the truth. You... He's gone. What's, what's going Alfie, where you go? We promised we'd dance again. Promise me to dance with me. We can't stop. Right. Why can't I see you though? Where where are you? Again? G- again what? I don't where'd you go? Hey. Oscar. Do you know what time it is? Uh, is it time time for the dancing to almost be done? My my feet are really hurting. It has been a year. A year. Exactly. On the day. Tonight we dance. Will you dance with me? But you're not dancing. I don't see you. Will you come? Wait, where are you? I don't think I'm really here, but I might be. Follow me. Do I see anything to like where I should be going or? No, you see that you're in the middle of this village, but there's something else. The, the buildings around you, they aren't 
looking like like the houses from there. No woodwork. They're stone arcs. Shattered windows. And somebody somebody else is calling your name. You're in a dream. Um, I think I think Oscar pauses for a moment and he, and he realizes that he's in this dream that it's someone else. But I, I think he, knowing Oscar, I think he he takes a moment and and he he pretends and he he follows to get closer to this individual. He's Oscar. I'll follow you. I, I'll always follow you, Oscar. I mean, well, I'm saying Oscar, <laughs> Alfie. <laughs> uh, that's not a <laughs> game I play if I don't say my own name as another character. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but Alfie isn't gone anywhere. He's he's just reframing the things he said to you earlier, standing there, looking right through you. Mm -hmm. There's somebody else, somebody you'll know for a much longer time. Someone you like to take advantage of. Shit. <laughs> And I think Oscar just like falls out of the window. Like he stops dancing and just like straight up falls as he realizes like I got hat. I got hoodwinked. Yalma. Yalma. Oscar falls. What do you do? Is there a time to reach him? Yes. I would try to to stop his break his fall. And you do. You got him. He's feeling warm. You saved him. Was Oscar. that you or was this God? Oscar, son, you should. We need to work together. What? Where are the others? Oh, we could have lived in the library. Probably, probably by the, by the stairs of the book. God damn it, Alfie. Uh, Alfie? Don't worry about it. It was Margaret and someone else. Oh, God, my feet. And, I, and he, like, reaches down and, like, pulls a piece of, like, glass splintering out of his foot. He's had worse. Ha yeah. Come Are on. you okay? I'll be fine. Just, let's go. Can I, I trust you not to start dancing again? Not until the mission's done. Good, good boy. Let's go find the others. Yeah. And see what trouble they are in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You find them outside at the lake. Oscar's hobbling a little. You too. I've killed one of the beasts. Only one left. But you can't really kill Vason. That's what I said. Maybe not you, Oscar. But they faced the mighty Christian and faltered. Mighty Christian, uh huh. And he like pulled another piece of glass at his foot and look, like, that's great. It's Please true. Tell. Look, I have the blood here on my sleeve. Yeah, Where and did... I got blood on my foot. <laughs> Where did you slay this beast? And near the shore. Come, come, follow me. I can show you. Ulrika's still sitting on the ground, yeah. looking at that document. So. What'd, you what'd you find, Ulrika? <laughs> Oscar's much more invested in that. <laughs> What's in the uh, voice document that I've had the chance to look at, Tom? Um, you find some documents of a long-forgotten monk who investigated the voice of the lake. Some sort of demon he uh, identified, but it seems it isn't the really bad sort of demon. It's bearable. But he uh, 
had a lot of digging into the the even older scriptures and he found some ways to um, protect oneself against it or to banish it so to protect yourself against the voice you're not a rope out of water lily and an old fishing net the voices may not cross it with their feet or hand to banish them in case you have to take this measure and I don't know what consequences it will have for this place you have to disrupt the singing and shower them in holy water but I feel there must be another way Them scribbles tell you anything? I have ways to bind and banish, but I don't have the proper equipment for the binding, and we'd have to find the other one for the banishment. And he seems to think there was some other way to go about it, but I don't know what it could be. Are you sure? The voices are in unrest because they are missing something. Something. Yeah. No. She's 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 thinking. She's got her she's got her her brain gears working. Um. I still. I still think they need to be completed somehow. But how can we complete them if they're down two thirds? Us. Huh? As far as I know, these spirits usually are benign and, well, maybe not friendly, but at least they don't cause trouble. Something has been disrupted and they're missing something. If we find the missing one, it might stop. Also, I don't think Kristen actually did kill that one since we can't. I'm sure the body's here somewhere. I think um, we need to find the missing one. Uh, Nils's, Nils's wife. Nils's girlfriend. Wife. Captive. Uh, Slave? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, was there anyone in the encampment downstairs, by the way? Tom, did I see anything? No. Okay. It uh, seemed to be... Uh, what's it called? There, there wasn't somebody within the last okay. 24 hours okay so we got some options we think the thing on the wall could be it or do we check Niels's place or I is there a way to summon it bring it about maybe if... could you sing that song Ulrika would that would that summon them here? Try. I'm I'll not going to do it for real, but she's going to sing it because there were all kinds of lyrics that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, Oscar will grab her hand and squeeze it while she does it, you know, sing with her. It's not going to let her do it alone. Where do you go to to sing this song? Uh, the edge of the lake to the dock, kind of like on the map where it says Lost Abbey, like right here. Mm -hmm. Facing right. towards the Lonely Stone. Or the lawn lay stone. <laughs> yes. Yalma t turns towards Christian. Christian, you you done good. You you can be proud of your work. We need you now. You must make sure your colleagues, we, don't get harmed. Are you prepared to do that? I reckon so. And he puts a another piece of chaw in his, his lip and he pulls his pistol out and he replaces the spent round and he goes 
I shall watch over the children. I'm 32. <laughs> yeah, Aurika's like a. F I mean, I'm 16, but Aurika's like a full ass woman. <laughs> Christian's 43 years old. He's you're all children. You're all children. <laughs> to me, to He's me, they are all all God's children. So, uh, yeah. um, uh, I actually, I, I, I um, Yalma places a hand on your shoulder and like give you a encouraging squeeze and says, "It's mm. good." Good to know we can always trust you, Christian. And we'll so, take over... sorry, God. And we'll take care of this with your guidance. We'll do it together. So Ulrika started off singing it kind of quietly since she's only heard it a couple times. After the first verse or so, she sounds very confident in what she's singing so she's known the song her whole life. Like she doesn't if anybody like waved a hand in front of her face, she wouldn't be there right now. She's just given herself over to this for the time being. And she takes one more step toward the water. Then there's the answer. Stiegen Liga from Den Leder till den oss Som vattnet skumma från En tystnad flyr från oss På vägen framåt Räck dig av den ett namn Den namn gav den eller dem Bejet av som en konung, kronan nära vis, ett och full av blommor. to the isle and the water and the hairs flowing on the surface with the tiniest ripples and the bright yellow eyes shine in their own light they reach out a hand to you. Rika starts to reach out her hand and then she pauses for a second and says, Where is your sister? What happened to her? She was taken. Is she... Do you do you know if she lives? Can we bring her back? She was ripped out of us. Taken away by force and sorcery. We know the place. What place? We'll, we'll bring her back to you. We crave. We crave a parent presence. Can you feel it? Uh, I can feel it. I, I know that craving too, but this isn't going to make it better. You're just going to want more. Where Where do you feel your sister? Is she, is she in the tavern? In a place of fire. bound to a dead tree. I know you've been trying to take some of us as replacements, but it's never going to be right. You need your sister back, correct? And where do you belong to? I don't know, but I don't think it's here. You're sure? 
she sure <laughs> Oscar like puts his own hand out towards her and just <laughs> laces his fingers with hers and anyone who looks at Ulrika can tell that she is definitely not sure <laughs> maybe I don't know. this this could be cool just, I could be I, a green lady is by, by by fire and dripping wax and by I think tree. I saw her I think she tried to talk to me that might have been her and you can join too you will be accepted welcomed no, she, she's loved like, she's, She's already loved and accepted somewhere else. And like Oscar's like taking the linked hand and like trying to pull her back towards shore a little. You, you can tell she wants to go, but she's like, no, we have to finish the job first. So she kind of like looked right else. She goes, we have to go back. Can't get your sister if we don't go back. Got to get your sister. Ow, shit, my feet. Christian's going to make his way towards the boat. and say we can do this for you will you sing with us on the way back yes also which one of you pretended to be Alfie no one is pretending we are only showing appreciation Given you what you long for. Mm. He like huffs a little, still kind of mad. All right, let's get in the boat. Let's go get the sister and fix this. And get the boat. <laughs> we, we row back to the tavern. Yeah. Like double time. Like Christian's like, <laughs> Christian's like, I don't want to hear any more of the singing. And just like. He's like, that's because he's been growing also. <laughs> Double speed. He's a little worried and about all these is definitely sitting at the back of the boat, just kind of. <laughs> God, Oscar keeps just like looking back at her, making sure she's still there, kind of worried. Let's make this short. You return to the tavern. You get over to the fish. No reaction from anyone in here they are all entranced some of them are actually standing up and you have this feeling they will walk over to the lake you find you find that the fish is not nailed to the board but bound by a very strange kind of threat. Like fishing line and uh, lilies? Yes. Ah, son of a bee. Oscar's like, this, this is gross. This is really gross. And he just like takes out his knife and starts like cutting the fishing line. If anybody here needs to protect themselves from the singing, that's the way to do it. But it's not right to bind away one third of them. It's not right to break up a family. On the back the board there's an inscription for what you have done to me oh that asshole Nielsen I bet and he did that you return the fish to the lake got your sister and all you can hear is and this is the end of the game. I thank you very much. Very nice. Very wow. nice. Oh, wow. that's great. To be clear, Oscar does find the old man and then you dance. <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's okay. I was just thinking, I'm like, I'm like, man, I can like see Ulrika's like whole trajectory now where she like, yeah. she like follows this, you know, sheet that, that, that she has to go find her family and find her real name. And whether or not she does at some point when she's a little older, she comes back and just walks into the water. Oh never my God. Seen again. Oh my Oscar God. would be devastated. Well, no, it's like, it's like 30 years, 30 years. So, I get, oh, I get yeah. goosebumps. In 30 oh. years, yeah. Oscar Long, might long not, term man. goals. Long yeah, term, yeah. Long term <laughs> life goals, walk into the sea and become. 
Oh yeah, and become an awesome, an awesome sea lady. Spirit sing. lady. I love it. Twelve out of ten. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Oh. Look at my hair. I am ready like, to be an awesome. You are ceiling. ready. Yeah. I was about to say, like Dixie's prepped. <laughs> and oh. Wes, I got goosebumped the entire scene with your father there. Ooh. Oh my god, it was, it was so good. It was so good. strong. Oh my god. I was Tom, like, that was so great too. Tom, yeah, Thank no, you, Tom. Tom. Amazing. That was oh the singing. Thank you. Oh. And the singing was awesome. You I loved did it. splendidly. <laughs> Looping I'm super in. good at picking up tunes, and I was so sad it was in a language I don't speak because I was <laughs> like, I was like, I could sing along, but I, I can't do well, that. It is in a language he doesn't speak either. He's been practicing. I did Aww. see you giggling a few times when he was singing. Yeah. <laughs> I like, saw you trying not to giggle. No, but it was so cute. Uh, he did a really good job. Amazing. <laughs> Probably like me trying to sing in Hebrew at Passover when oh, I was God. <laughs> Same. It is it is actually a german song i sent to jenny to translate into swedish uh to uh practice it and sing it to you what's the song um oh uh yeah it's um it's a song about a mountain actually which is in france not in sweden and um <laughs> it's about the wind uh blowing very quietly over it, and... I was getting big, like down to the river to pray vibes. Mm -hmm. So good, very much so. Thank you, Wes, my other southern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, so excellent, excellent, excellent. If you want to play Vice in yourself, then you can go to Free League's website. You can pick it up, the physical copy, and all the accoutrement that comes with it. You can also check it out on drivethroughrpg.com. You can get the PDF for it. Um, definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun. Before we go, going in around, where can everybody find you? And uh, just for more content or anything, of more of what you do, starting with Jenny. Me? Yeah. Uh, you can... I don't know. <laughs> uh, you can listen to me doing some some guest starring in Red Moon role playing, I guess. But that's basically all I do, <laughs> other than play role playing games. <laughs> you don't have a Twitter or anything like no social media. Oh yeah, I do. I do have a Twitter. It's called Spell Mama, which is gaming mom. Like I can say gaming mom, yeah. yeah. Spell Mama. Um, so that's my Twitter tag, and I'm not that big on social media but of course he said if anyone give me a holler i will holler, holler back of course so excellent excellent think, yeah um all right and dixie you can find me in most places on social media at Dixie Cyanide, and now I have to stop myself from saying, and you can find us at theonyxpath.com. <laughs> because like, every time I always start rolling into the end of the podcast. Um, you can hear me every week on the Onyx Pathcast, uh, where we talk about sometimes our games and sometimes random bullshit. Uh, we have an episode coming up where we just talked about video games and stuff we've been playing, so who knows. Uh, you can see me here fairly often, including on the 13th, I'm doing an interview with Gehenna Gaming. Um, all next weekend, you can see me and a bunch of us at Save Against Fear Online Con, uh, which I really encourage everyone to come to. A lot of fundraisers for good causes. Uh, Save Against Fear is super cool in that it's with the Badana Group, and they blend gaming and therapy. Um, so there are a lot of workshops for actual therapists, which is super cool ways to use it. There's also just a lot of regular gaming content and panels and things that will be uh, throughout the weekend. So yeah, check that out. Excellent. Uh, and Kay? Uh, so you can mostly find me on the GG Discord. And oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there too all the time. Yeah, like, just we're always there. Yeah, on <laughs> each other's social media, we're all chilling there, sharing really cool pictures about like cats and lots of memes, clothing, just, lots of memes, lots of really good memes, terrible dank, memes, dank memes. <laughs> uh, and not for the next two weeks, because we're having a fun little shenanigan hiatus. But after, you can see me on Mondays for your continuation of Monday Night Monster Arts and probably a couple other little games here and there on this lovely channel. And you can find me at Brother X Wes on Twitter and at Comfort Carry and for Carrying Comfort Studios, which is my Twitch stream here on twitch.tv forward slash Carrying Comfort Studios. You can find me here uh, so occasionally, sometimes, maybe. Um, and check out uh, October 25th. Uh, Karen Comfort Studios has its first actual play stream. It's Iron a City by Night. Iron City by Night, set in my uh, hometown, or not hometown, but my current 
town of what? Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, and it's starring Ravnos from Gehenna Gaming, Aid from Gehenna Gaming and Gehenna Valley, oh. Ellie Collins from LT- ATL by Night, and a close personal friend of mine, Kevin, the one janitor Peterson. Uh, he's, it's his first time. So go ahead and check that out. October 25th, 7 p.m. Central. That's the weekend before Halloween. Um, and it is on a Sunday. So I'd see you there. And last but certainly not least, our master storyteller, Tom, take it away. Where can everybody find you and all the dope, dope stuff that you do? Uh, you can uh, read me blurring about the stuff I do on Twitter at Tom Murr. Uh, with <laughs> that's German. T O M M U R R, and then the number two. Because my name was already taken. I dare you. <laughs> How dare. dare you. <laughs> and there I am talking about my tiny, tiny, tiny uh, YouTube channel, Story Maze. They're really they amazing. Hear me doing some, um, they come from beneath the sea, audio drama stuff, and changeling fan fiction and story, uh, um, fairy tale readings and stuff like the, this. So the fairy tales are so good, y'all. I fall asleep to them at night. They're great. Listen to them. Uh, they say go... they put you to sleep. That's not very nice. <laughs> go ahead and say we'll have a mod or somebody drop a link there. Do, do, do yes. go subscribe to that channel. It is excellent content. And if you were entranced with Tom's excellent voice like I was during this whole one shot, then uh, you can definitely, definitely, definitely uh, check out more of that awesome content. Uh, for Gehenna Gaming... You can check us out here. Give a follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. At Gehenna Gaming on Twitter, at Gehenna Gaming on Instagram. Uh, you can find the Gehenna Gaming Discord. There's links dropping as I'm speaking right now, hopefully. Uh, there's merch on Threadless. There's so much great content. Uh, I know for a fact here, it's Saturday. So Sunday, I believe, is Wrath and Glory, maybe? If not, it's Forbidden Lands. It's one of the two. Um, Something's happening tomorrow. Wrath and Glory. <laughs> Wrath and Glory. Monday, there's a, uh, a one shot. A one shot of Seasons by Stephanie, our wonderful Queen of the Fae, is giving us that more Fae magic. And the lovely Dixie will be there, which means it is definite watch. Uh, and then Tuesday, I think, is, uh, is I guess it's either an interview or it's something else. Um, and then, Wednesday, we've got Worlds and Crafts. Wednesday, we've got Worlds and Crafts with Bran. Thursday, we've got second Worlds. episode of Dreams Askew. Second the, you, yeah. We're still here. Dream Askew. Very cool. Uh, very, very good. Check out the first episode on the VOD, and it'll be on YouTube soon. And then Friday, I don't know. And then Saturday, it's back to maybe Saturday Night One Shots, maybe not. Shenanigans. But there's so much great content on Gehenna Gaming. Go ahead and consider giving a follow and stuff like that. There's there's links dropping below me as I'm speaking. Um, uh, but I think that's it for Gehenna Gaming. I'm Wes. This has been Kay, Jenny, Dixie, and Tom. Thank you all, and have an excellent, excellent night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>